Welcome to the LSE Methodology Institute's data tutorial series sponsored by the LSE Annual Fund. In this video, we will be carrying out a multiple linear regression analysis. In this tutorial, we will show how to run a multiple linear regression analysis. The data set is the same as data underscore tutorials.dta. The response variable we are using for this tutorial is resources, which is a titudinal item that says that we are using up the hurt resources too quickly. The answer options vary from 0, no definitely not, to 10, yes definitely. Explanatory variables are age, which is the age of respondent in years, gender, 0 for female and 1 for male, and income, which is the respondent's household income. To run the multiple linear regression, we just have to type in regress with the name of the response variable followed by explanatory variables age, gender and income. So now that we have this data output, let's have a look at what some of this output means. So first we have R squared and this number next to R squared tells us that 13.66 percent of the variance of the response variable resources is explained by our regression model. Similarly, we have adjusted R squared, which has a similar interpretation, but just takes into account the number of variables in our regression model. So now, if we focus on this table down here, we see our response variable resources, our explanatory variables, age, income, and gender, and finally, the constant for the regression equation. So for the constant, and for each of the explanatory variables, we have the regression coefficients, the standard errors, the values of the t-test statistic, the corresponding p-values, and finally the 95% confidence intervals. So for this type of analysis, what we're interested in doing is figuring out whether or not there's any evidence of relationships between our explanatory variable and our response variable controlling for the other explanatory variables. And to do that, we set up a series of hypothesis tests which have corresponding null hypotheses. And the null hypotheses are as follows. First, in the population there is no linear relationship between age and resources controlling for income and gender. Secondly, in the population there is no linear relationship between income and resources controlling for age and gender. Now gender is a binary variable with zero coded for females and one coded for males so there's a slightly different null hypothesis here and the null hypothesis is as follows in the population there is no difference between males and females in their average values of the variable resources so now we run our t-tests and find the corresponding p-values so first we notice here that for income the p-value isn't particularly low so we don't have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis of no linear relationship in the population. On the other hand for age we notice that the p-value is quite low and so there is some evidence to reject the null hypothesis of no linear relationship between age and resources so we have some evidence to suggest that there is a linear relationship between age and resources controlling for income and gender in the population. Moreover, we see that that coefficient is positive, meaning that as age increases, the level of agreement with the statement that we are using up the Earth's resources too quickly also increases. There's also a numerical interpretation for this, which is that for an increase in age of the respondent by one year there is on average an increase in the value of the variable resources of 0 0.023 or thereabouts. We also notice that the p-value for the variable gender is quite low and so we have evidence to suggest that there is a relationship in the population between gender and resources controlling for age and income. And the interpretation there, since it's a negative number, is that on average the value of the variable resources is lower for males 
than it is for females by about one and a half points. So there you have it. We've had a look at the output from Stata. We found the R squared value and then we looked at this table down here and found the coefficients. We ran hypothesis tests for each of them and found in some cases there was evidence of significant relationships in the population. In other cases there wasn't. And then we carried out interpretations for those variables in which we found evidence of a significant relationship. So that's all for now. Goodbye.